phonics practice today, we are reading a cub in the tub. Now the ending sound is ub, ub, ub. Let's go. As always, I will read first and you will listen and then you read on your own. Are you ready? This is Bub. He is a cub. Bub the cub needs a scrub. Good job. Now it's your turn. Nice. That's a hard one already. Now let's go to the next page. Why does Bub the cub need a scrub? Your turn. Nice. Let's find out why. Bub found dirt. He started to rub. Your turn. Nice. So that's why he needs a scrub. Bub the cub did rub. And rub and rub. Your turn. Good job, you're doing great. So much dirt, said the cub. Now Bub needs a scrub. You try. Nice. Good job. Off to the tub. Your turn. Nice. Bub the cub is in the tub. He takes some soap. He starts to scrub. You try. Nice. Good job! This is a hard page. You did amazing. Bub the cub does scrub and scrub and scrub. Now your turn. Good. Nice. Now Bub is done. He is a clean cub. Good job, Bub. You try. Nice. Now it is time for some grub. Goodbye, Bub the Cub. You try. Good job. You did amazing. High five. In this book, we learned the ending sound ub, ub, ub with all of these words. And now I will ask you if these words are rhyming words with bub and tub. Are you ready? The first word is club. Does club rhyme with cub and tub? Yes, very good. The second word is tree. Does tree rhyme with cub? No, it doesn't. Good job. The third word is bowl. Does bowl rhyme with cub? It doesn't. Good job. And the final word is sub. Does sub rhyme with cub? Nice. It does. Good job. Now it's your turn to tell me how many other words you can think of that rhyme with cub and tub. Write your answers down below. Take some time and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are reading about our favourite cat ninja, the silent master of cat foo. Let's go! Metro City You may have found my secret lair, cat ninja, but you are too late. Your feeble feline brain is no match for Master Hamster. Cat Ninja, Silent Master of Catful, in 
The Great Hamster Heist Part 1 An enemy's list or something even more diabolical? Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of hamsters? Uh-oh. Thanks to my genius robot's rocket boots, I make my escape. But know this, very soon, all of Metro City will bow to me. Uh-oh. Get off me, you fiendish furball. you crash us both. A chunk k crash Fool, you are no match for my electro-powered intellect. The reign of rodents is here. Uh-oh. Oh no, look at Cat Ninja. But Cat Ninja uses his secret feline free fall to safely angle his descent. Plop. Whoa, is that a cat? Dressed as a ninja? Oh my god, he's so cute. I gotta get a pic. Weird, dude. Cat Ninja. Cat have fishy, please. Lows. Hey, Claude, look. It's another cat ninja meme. Little does anyone suspect that Metro City's protector is a hero by night and a house cat by day. And a surprisingly popular meme. Fishy, please. Ha, these are the best. Got a comment. Let's see. Password is CL Claude. Boy, do you know anyone who doesn't use their pet's name for their password? So, the cat's name is Claude. Leon, breakfast. Coming, mum. Come on, chow time. Leon, where's Mr. Squeaks? Huh? How should I know? He's not in his cage. You did something with him, didn't you? Why would I do something with your silly hamster? Cause you're jealous. Oh, so that's his brother with the hamster, and she's the one with the cat. Ooh, the cat and the hamster. The hamster has a remote. Uh oh, the cat can see, and the hamster's trying to hide it. Mr. Squeaks, there you are. Time for yum yums. Yum yum time. Squeak. Boing. Ooh, bank. Swish. Ooh, the hamster's playing basketball. He's eating lunch. And the cat is suspicious. The cat goes away and Hamster is having an evil grin. The cat races for her food and ooh, the hamster's causing trouble. Cat ninjas he swoosh. Interlude origin stories starring Cat Ninja and Master Hamster. Years ago, a young kitten wanders the mean streets of Metro City. Well, look at you, you poor thing. I suppose you're hungry, aren't you? Oh, you're a quiet one, aren't you? Quiet and hungry, in need of a helping hand. Oh, I just love this movie. He defends a whole village from gangsters. Very heroic. Hey, old lady, hand over your purse, grandma. Now. Oh, dear. And here I hoped you were going to offer me help with all these bags. This is a ninja grandma. Kick. Ow. Oof. Crazy old lady. Chop. Ow. I give. I give. Smash. The cat's loving it. Meanwhile, as the flower of justice was beginning to bloom in young cat ninja's heart, the foul seed of evil was sprouting in a hidden laboratory. At last, I, Dr. Von Malice, have perfected my mind transfer device. Now I will use my genius intellect to transfer my brain energy into this nigh indestructible robot menace. Once awakened, my robot shall conquer. Eh? Mr. Squeaks, I told you not to bother me when I'm monologuing. Bad hamster. Now stay out of mummy's way. I've got a city to conquer before supper. Zap! Boom! No, I'm getting too much feedback. It's going to squeak. But fate had a different plan that day, as the meek little hamster fell into the path of the scientist's beam of electrical brain energy. Uh-oh. X2 plus Y2 equals world domination. The Great Hamster Heist, part two. Ooh, this is the ninja cat in his secret lab. Boy, do you know anyone who doesn't use their pet's name for their password? Hmm, so all these names of pets. He wants to go to the bank. 
Has our hero discovered the true nature of Master Hamster's wicked plans? True cat genius is a thing to behold. Later that night, the Metro City Bank. Cat Ninja spies Master Hamster inside the bank with his gang of rodent thugs. Hurry up with that supercomputer Gerbil gang. We don't have all night. Come on, ya mugs. Ooh, look at this. The boss needs those names. My plan is so simple, it's genius. What's the one thing pet owners have in common? They all use their pet's names for their passwords. Foolish animal lovers. It's been easy sending my Gerbil gang throughout the city to steal pet names. Even easier was creating the mathematical formula to extrapolate passwords from those names. Soon, I'll have hacked the bank account of every pet owner in Metro City. With all that money, I'll build an army of super robots. Just watch Cat Ninja try to stop me then. Huh? Access denied. Why isn't it working? Everyone's changing their passwords. How? How could they know? Just a few hours earlier, the Cat Ninja, click, 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 flash. Losers use pet name passwords, lols, blip, 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 blip. Oh D, a ninja cat thinks I'm a loser? Bet change that password, I'll use my son's name instead. This is all cat ninja's doing, I just know it. I don't know how he did it, but I know it was that pathetic puss in boots. Uh, boss, I know you're busy monologuing and all, but look, shut up, crack, pizza. Gerbil gang, now's the time, my underlings. Get that cat! You heard the man, boys. Let's teach this cat ninja a lesson. Kick, wallop, chop, kick, squeak! Oh, the cat ninjas won the fight. Note to self, get bigger underlings. Groundhogs, maybe? You've won this time, cat ninja, but I'll be back. You will never get rid of me. Ha 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 ha! Epilogue, days later. Happy birthday, D Leon! The cat and hamster aren't happy with each other. I want to pick, say cheese, squeak, click, the end. Mm. What do you think about this cat ninja and the master hamster? Let me know down below. And if you like this comic, then you'll like the next one even more. I'll see you over there. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For social studies today, we are going to Japan, one of the most beautiful countries in Asia and also home to anime. Let's go! Chapter 1 Welcome to Japan! Blooming cherry blossoms, cities packed with people, beautiful beaches, mountains capped with snow, these are all sites found in Japan. Japan is a chain of islands off the eastern coast of Asia. Mount Fuji stands near Tokyo. It is the tallest mountain there. Forests spread across the land. Snow monkeys chatter in the trees. Bears, foxes and deer search for food. Red-crowned cranes like these ones can be found in marshes. Pairs dance together. Did you know that red-crowned cranes are a sign of good luck? These birds are often shown in Japanese art. They are even on the money. Tall castles are found in Japan. Some were built more than 1,000 years ago. They were built along trade routes and rivers. Why? To defend the areas. From the outside, a castle might appear to have three to five stories, but the inside has more levels. Why? To confuse the invaders. Chapter 2 Busy and Crowded most of Japan's cities lie along the coast. High-rise apartments are common. City gardens are filled with bonsai. They are tiny trees like this, trimmed into special shapes. Many people work in service jobs like banking. Factory workers build cars, machinery, even fun toys. Tokyo is the capital. It has more people than many countries do. There is always a traffic jam, and so most people take trains or the subway to get around. The Prime Minister runs the government and Japan's Emperor attends special events. Japanese students study very hard. They wear school uniforms. Children bow to teachers. Some attend juku or cram schools for more studies after school. 
Children take turns cleaning the school. It is the duty of all students to help. Then they practice sports or music, or they create art. Take a look at this. The Japanese language has three alphabets. Kanji is for ideas, words, and names. Hiragana is used for other words in Japan, and katakana is for words from other languages. Chapter 3 Life in Japan. The kimono is the traditional robe that has been worn for hundreds of years. It is held in place by an obi. These robes are now worn for ceremonies and special events. Men's kimonos are simpler. They come in colors like black, gray, brown, or blue. Vegetables and fish are part of most dishes. Rice is served at every meal. Noodles are made from rice flour. And rice cakes with sweet filling are served for dessert. Yummy! When soup is served, chopsticks are used to eat the vegetables and noodles. Then people slurp up the broth. Tea is served in small cups. What do you think about this? Fish is eaten often in Japan. Given the country's location, why do you think fish is a part of most meals? Let me know your answer down below. The people here like to go to baseball games. They play soccer. People of all ages fold thin paper into animals or other shapes. This is called origami, like this. And then there's Children's Day, which is a very special holiday on May 5th. Families voice hopes for when their children are grown. In spring, the cherry blossoms bloom. People picnic together under the trees. What would you like to do in Japan? And did you know that Japanese comics are called manga? Film and television animation is called anime. Now let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is capital, which is a city where government leaders meet. Ceremonies are formal events that mark important occasions. Cram means to study very hard over a short period of time. Emperor is the ruler of an empire. Invaders are people who enter an area for conquest or plunder. Marshes are areas of wet, muddy land. Origami is the Japanese art of folding paper into decorative shapes. Prime Minister is the leader of a country. Service jobs are jobs and work that provide services for others, such as hotel, restaurant, and retail positions. Subway is a train that runs on underground tracks. And finally, trade is the business of buying and selling goods. Now it's your turn to share what you think and feel about Japan. Let me know down below. And also tell me some interesting things you learned in today's book. Take some time to think about it, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. For Animal World today, we are doing part 4 of the insect series. Today, we are learning about the milkweed bug, a very beautiful bug you find in the garden. Let's go. What are milkweed bugs? Milkweed bugs are common garden insects. Their black and orange colors stand out. Have you seen one before? Milkweed bugs taste really bad. Their bright colors warn enemies to stay away. Milkweed bugs have two long antennae. Their mouths are pointy and straw-like, like mosquitoes. Life on a plant. Milkweed bugs live near milkweed plants. These plants grow in fields and woods. This is what they look like. Milkweed bugs love to eat milkweed seeds. They also suck up plant sap, like what he's doing right now. Some milkweed bugs migrate each fall. They travel south, where winters are warm. From egg to adult, female milkweed bugs lay about 30 eggs every day. The eggs hatch quickly too. Young milkweed bugs are called nymphs. They eat a lot. This is what they look like. The lifespan of a milkweed bug is about one to two months. Nymphs molt as they grow. Soon, their wings come in and it's time to fly. Now, let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is antenna which are feelers connected to the head that sense information around them. Molt is to shed skin for growth. Hatch is to break out of an egg. Nymphs are young insects. 
Nymphs look like small adults without full wings. My great is to travel from one place to another, often with the seasons. And finally, sap is watery juices from a plant. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the milkweed bug? Share with me down below. And also, tell me some things you learned in today's book that you found interesting. Take your time, and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye-bye. For science and art class today, we are learning all about the color black. The scariest, spookiest color in the world. Let's go. A dark world. The human eye can see millions of colors. The darkest of these colors is black. Many people like the color black. Black things can be found in nature, like these cows that are completely black. Many spiders are black. You can find them crawling around outside. Tarantulas are some of the world's largest spiders. You can hear noisy black crows outside too. They make quite the racket. Crows can be found all around the United States. They are always black. This cute little ball of fur wants to play. Jack is a black lab puppy. The night sky is black. Stars shine brightly in the darkness. You can look at stars in the night sky using a telescope. You can even see black horses in the countryside. This is a mare and her young filly. People also make black things. We wear black clothes, like this boy's school uniform, which is mostly black. Limousines are fancy cars, and they are often black. Famous people ride in them. Here is the US President Barack Obama waving his hands as he gets into a black limousine. Some foods are also black, like these chocolate sandwich cookies, also known as Oreos, that are black with a white filling in the middle. Black and white together. It is hard to think of black without white, because they are opposites. Black things absorb light from the sun, while your white things reflect light from the sun. This boy's black pants and dark jacket absorb sunlight. That helps him keep warm in the snow. People also take black and white pictures. They can be very beautiful. Black and white photos, like these wedding photos, include many shades of grey. Artists also create black and white drawings like this. This is black charcoal on white paper. Now let's talk about the meaning of black. The black colour has different meanings. It depends on the situation. These orchestra members wear black tuxedos and dresses for a performance. Fashion designers think black is a glamorous colour. Evening gowns are often black. They make black clothes for everyone to wear. They say everyone looks good in black. And then there are other people who think that black is a sad colour. People wear black to a funeral. Ben loves black. Ben loves the black colour. He wears black shoes. He plays a black guitar in a band. He will be a star one day. And here is Licorice, who does not like loud music. She is Ben's black cat. Some people think a black cat brings bad luck if it crosses your path. Ben's family lives in a black house. They drive a black car. What about you? What is your favorite color? Let me know down below. Now let's go through some new words we learned from today's book. The first word is absorb, which is to take in. Philly is a young female horse. Glamorous means exciting and attractive. Limousine is a fancy car. Mare is an adult female horse. Opposite means as different as possible. And finally, reflect means to throw or bounce back. Now it's your turn. What do you think and feel about the black color? Let me know down below. And also share with me some of the awesome things you have that is black. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. For today's English class, we are reading Brownie Locks and the Three Balls of Cornflakes. Stay to the end of the story because then we have questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go.
Mum, put out three bowls of cornflakes. Let's go for a walk before breakfast, she said. Brownie Locks the bear was out walking too. She smelled the cornflakes. Mmm, tasty, she thought, climbing in. Brownie Locks sat on Dad's chair. Too hard, she growled. So she tried Mum's chair. Too soft, she moaned. She went over to Sam's chair. Just right, she thought, reaching for Sam's cornflakes. But crash! Brownie Locks was too heavy and Sam's chair snapped. Brownie Locks felt sleepy. She tried the biggest bed. Too hard, she grunted. She tried the next bed. Too bouncy, she cried. Then she tried the smallest bed. Just right, she said. So she climbed on and fell fast asleep. Mum, Dad and Sam came back from their walk. Dad frowned. Who's been sitting in my chair, he asked. Who's been sitting in my chair, Mum gasped. Then Sam yelled, who broke my chair and ate all my cornflakes? They looked all over the house. Who's been sleeping in my bed, cried Dad. And in my bed, cried Mum. Hey, look who's in my bed, yelled Sam, and she's snoring. Brownie Locks woke up, gushed downstairs and ran outside. She ran across the garden and into the woods. She was a nice bear, Sam sighed. I wish she'd come back. Dad fixed Sam's chair and found a beanbag for Brownie Locks. The next morning, Mum put out four bowls of cornflakes. One for her, one for Sam, one for Dad, and a big one for the bear. Brownie Lock soon came back when she smelt the cornflakes. Here's your bowl, said Sam. Here's your beanbag, called Dad. Brownie Lock sat on Dad's chair. Try the beanbag, Dad said. Then Brownie Locks tried Sam's bowl. This one's bigger, said Sam. Brownie Locks gobbled up all the cornflakes and slurped up all the milk in the big bowl. Brownie Locks yawned. She thumped up the stairs and laid on Sam's bed. Then Sam curled up with Goldilocks and read her a story. But Goldilocks longed to be outside. She climbed out of the window and ran into the woods. Sam wanted to see his new friend again. Come back soon, he cried. Brownie Locks liked the woods, but she also liked Sam and the tasty cornflakes. She did come back the very next day and the day after that and the day after that. Now it's time for some questions. Today we have four questions. Are you ready? Question one. Dad is feeling sad early on in the book. Which word shows he was feeling sad? Was it A. Dad gasped? B. Dad frowned? Or C. Dad smirked? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is B. Dad frowned because he was sad. Very good. Question two. What other story does this book remind you of? Is it A. Brown Bear, Brown Bear B. Little Red Riding Hood Or C. Goldilocks and the Three Bears What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C. Goldilocks and the Three Bears This one is a funny version of it. Question 3. According to the story, why didn't Goldilocks stay? Is it A. She longed to be outside B. She was too cold Or C. She was in trouble with her mum What do you think? I'll give you a moment The answer is A. She longed to be outside Which means she likes to be outside Final question How is this story different from the Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Is it A. Nothing is different This story is the same as Goldilocks and the Three Bears B. Goldilocks is grumpy and unkind or was it C? The main character is a bear and not a girl and the family is human. What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The right answer is C. The main character in this story is the bear and the family is human. Very good. How many questions did you get right this time? Did you get four? Three, two or one? Let me know down below. If you got four, it means you got 100% and you're awesome. Very good. Now it's your turn to share down below what do you think about this story. Take some time to think about it and when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.